Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Add on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again. I am here to review another Goosebumps book. This is one that's going to be tough for me, and I know I've said that about multiple of them, but this one for real, because I, I can hardly remember it. I mean, it was so bad. It was Say Cheese and Die, and, and mostly I remember what I remember about this book because of the episode that I watched, so that's not a good sign. This this book was really boring. It started off promising. It had a pretty good start of them going to this old house, this murder house, I guess it was, and exploring, and it quickly got boring and repetitive, and that is a consistent problem with R.L. Stein's books. Either they're boring because they're moving so slow, and it's like, is this the whole plot? Like, this very basic, simple plot? Like, it's too bad a lot of these stories aren't fully fleshed out, and they aren't fully, you know, fully developed stories because they have a lot of potential. You know, you have this camera that, that can kill people. It can, you know, you take pictures of them and, uh, you know, you see what will happen to them in the future in the photo. I mean, that's a really cool concept. And it's really wasted in this book because most of the book is just these these little things happening. And they did it so much more effectively in uh, it, it's from underneath the sink or whatever that one was called. Uh, I, God, this is terrible. <laughs> it makes me look so bad, but it's just, you know, if, if they were good, I would remember the titles I would remember. So it's not really a statement on me, it's a statement on the books themselves. Uh, even though the one under the sink one was really good and I liked it. Uh, it had the same type of thing where you have this bad thing and, or you have like a bad item and it makes bad things happen over and over and over again. But the bad things, they're such little things. Like, it's like he falls down, a guy falls down the stairs, a guy gets hit with a ball in baseball. Like, these are really, like, small things. They don't really have as much impact as, like, in the, in the, the sponge one, you know, those were some really intense sequences. Like, if they if they didn't get the sponge back within a certain... I mean, the gruel. If they didn't get the gruel back within a certain time, uh, the, the owner would die. I mean, if that's not intense, I don't know what is. Well, with this camera, <laughs> you don't really have anything like that. It's just these idiots who keep taking pictures. It's like, oh, oh, I'm going to take a picture. Snap! I'm going to take a picture of you. Snap. They just do that the whole book. Like what the hell are they thinking? And they don't learn their lesson until like three fourths of the way through. And it's just ridiculous. Not only that, but there's another friend in this book who isn't even in the episode. In the episode, you just have Greg you have the girlfriend, uh, Sheena, whatever the fuck she was called, and then you had the friend uh, of both of them. I think his name was, like, Bird or something. I don't know. <laughs> these characters are not very good at all. That's another thing, is that these characters were so boring. They were so bland. I can't even remember them. Like, uh, well, one of them like baseball, I guess? Like, I can't remember. <laughs> That's how bad this was. It was so boring. And, you know, they have Spidey, the serial killer. He's in the background, and he's stalking Greg, and they try to make it, like, really ominous. But I wasn't scared at all because I had seen the episode, number one, and that helped. Uh, but number two, I just thought, you know, Arl Stein already said... He doesn't do, like, anything that risque in his Goosebumps books, so it's not like the serial killer is going to break into his house and kill him or anything, or kill his whole family or something, you know. Uh, something light and goofy is going to happen, and that's what's going to happen. And a lot of the book, too, spends time with, with the house. 
I can barely remember the house. Like, th this book is just so unremarkable with such a cool concept. The concept of a camera that can tell the future. I mean, what a cool concept. That's probably one of the better concepts of the whole series. And another thing about the series, which is honestly, like, something that isn't touched upon, even though I actually think it's a valid point, is that I really love the covers of these Say Cheese and Die uh, books. You know, that cover with the, you know, you have a Polaroid photo, and then you have the family, and they're all skeletons. You know, it doesn't make sense, because that never happens in the story, but it's such a cool idea, and I love that the just the, it's such a cool picture, like these skeleton people, they're all just like living their normal lives, like it's really cool, and it's, it's like, it's so, it's such an obvious thing to do too, it's like, why didn't, you know, any, and then you see the new covers too, that's another thing, they did all these shitty covers for the newer Goosebumps books, and they all look so trash, I mean, the Say Cheese and Die one was like a picture of the car that got in a crash. It was really bad. And, you know, even though the covers are so much better than the actual books, they should just keep those covers. Because they really are the highlight of this whole series, honestly. Uh, I don't know. It just kept on repeating over and over again. Someone would take a picture of someone... And then something bad would happen. And then wasn't there like a bully? And then like, yeah, something happened with the bully. I kind of remembered that. And then I definitely remember that there was a twist with Spidey. And I guess Spidey was actually a scientist or an inventor. And he killed his partner or something. And I thought that was stupid. That was like a cartoony, really dumb goofy twist I really preferred the 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 episode where he's just like a serial killer or something and he he has the camera because he made it which that's something I have a lot of trouble with because they really don't develop him at all into any person who could make a camera like that like this is a serious weapon this is a probably one of the most dangerous weapons in the entire Goosebumps series. And you're telling me this hobo, this fat hobo, uh, who lives in this like abandoned house slash building in the episode, you're telling me he just made this camera out of nowhere. Like, how did he test it? Who did he test it on? You know, there's so many questions, but I really hate the explanation being, he was a scientist, and he he became a mad scientist. Like, uh, 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just, that's, that's a, a really a cliche thing in these Goosebumps books, is that you'll have someone who had good intentions to do something, and then they just go completely insane, and they go, uh, they start doing evil things, and it's like, why? Like, why? It, there needs to be a valid reason for things. There needs to be some logic. And when you spend a whole book, I mean, this this book felt so long, I, I wanted to fall asleep. I was like, I want to get this book over with. It is torture. That's how bad it was, but I can't even remember it, so that's why it's even worse. Because, like, at least with some of the bad ones, like Go Eat Worms and shit, at least I can remember those. They're memorable. You know, they stick in my mind. Uh, I actually, you know, remember the whole stories, basically. Not with this one, but it just had that repetitiveness of all of his books where he has something just happen over and over and over again, and he doesn't bother to actually make a story happen. It's almost like the story is just the thing happening over and over again. Like, uh, for instance, in Attack of the ja Jack-O-Lanterns, which that's a long way from this review, and that one, you know, they go trick-or-treat, 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 the whole book. Ugh, so repetitive. I give this book an F, uh, just an F, because I do like the concept, and I did like 
like maybe one scene or two. I mean, I like some of the ideas, like a lot of it is just like what's in the episode. So it's hard to say, like, is it really good? Because I'm technically judging it after having seen that episode. And so it's, it's a different kind of experience. You know, I can't really say, oh, I really like that part with the car where uh, they get in a car crash because I've, I've already seen that before. Uh, anyways, please like this video, comment, and tell me what you thought about Say Cheese and Die, and then subscribe if you'd like to see more Goosebumps book reviews. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.